the price has been paid. The price to, that was supposed to be paid for your relationship with God has been paid in full. The full revelation of God, we see it through Christ Jesus. And God gives life and he gives it in abundance. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watch, watching this show, Beholding Christ is the name. My name is Ben Fetcher and I'm excited. I am so happy that we've met yet again to reveal the Father. This is our fourth episode of Revealing the Father and I'm delighted about it. Anytime I talk about the Father, my heart jumps with joy because I know this is the greatest revelation that man can have and this is the greatest revelation that leads to liberation. Let me say that again. The greatest revelation that leads to man's liberation is understanding God as Father. Maybe you've known him for ages as other things, you've known him in different ways, but now in the new covenant, God wants to be known as Father. And I'll pick from where we left last in John chapter 17 from verse number 24. John chapter 17 from verse number 24. Uh -huh. John chapter number 17 from verse number 24. The Bible says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given to me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my full glory, the very splendor you have placed upon me because you have loved me even before the beginning of time. Verse 25 this is where we, are, we were reading. You are my righteous father, but the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. So there is a perfect way of knowing God and the unbelieving world cannot know him in this way because to them he is God, but to the believing he is Father. And the Bible says in John 3, 16, that Christ was the only begotten at that time. Then in Colossians he says he is the first begotten. Why? Because when Christ was raised, we were raised together with him. And he was the first one to be uh, to be born from the dead. He was the first one to be born again. Yes, Christ was born again. Because when he died, he died and he was separated from God so that he can pay the price for our separation from God. When Adam and Eve sinned, man died and was separated from God. So, Christ had to die in the same way, that is to be separated from God. And when he died, and you know, separation from God means spiritual death. So Jesus, not only did he die the physical death, but he also died the spiritual death, separation from God. That is why he cried. For the first time, he called God, God. All along in the, Old Testament, in the New Testament, when Jesus was here on earth, he was calling God, my father. But on the cross, very specific on the cross. When he was hanged on the cross, he cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't say, my father, my father. Why? At that time, he was separated from the father. Hallelujah. And why did that happen? It happened so that you and I can be accepted. That is why what we saw in Romans chapter 8 verse 15, that we have received full acceptance and we have been brought into the family of God. And remember we said that we are no longer in the courtroom. We are no longer under judgment. Why? Because we have passed from death to life. We have passed from judgment to enjoying our family relationship with God. Why? Because all judgment was taken by Christ. He paid every price that was supposed to, pay, to be paid for your sins. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So the wages of sin is what Christ received. Because when he, he was made sin, he received dead, to be separated from God. So he paid the price in full. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And as I share this word with you, I am here to tell you that the price has been paid. The price to, that was supposed to be paid for your relationship with God has been paid 
in full. So every preacher who preaches the gospel should preach from this understanding that you are not, we are not preaching to tell you what you should do so that you can have a good relationship with God. We are not preaching to tell you the rules you should keep so that you can have or you can be in good books with God. Why? Because whatever you are supposed to pay has been paid in full. So as I preach like this, I am a receipt distributor. Let me say that again. I am a receipt distributor. My work is to distribute receipts telling you your healing has been paid in full. Take it. Your deliverance has been paid in full. Take it. Your forgiveness has been paid in full. This is the receipt, the blood of Jesus. So take your forgiveness. Take your healing. Take everything you need. He says, come boldly into the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy, that you may take as much as you want from the throne of of grace. Hallelujah. We are talking about our father. Verse 25 where we read, you are my righteous father, but the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. So I'm saying there is a perfect way of knowing God. And he says, and all those who believe in me also know that you have sent me. Verse 26, you listen very carefully. He says, I have revealed to them who you are. So who came to reveal God? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So before Christ came, they were living in, uh, in imaginations. God show, uh, revealed himself in instances. They didn't have the full truth. The truth was building up. But when Christ appeared on the scene, he says, I have revealed to them who you are. The greatest way of knowing God is through revelation. How does this, and how does, does this revelation come? Through Christ. The more you know Christ, the more you know the Father. He said to Philip in John chapter, uh, chapter 3, that if you had known me, you ha you'd have known the Father. That is John chapter 14. If you had known me, you'd have known the Father. Praise be to God. So he says, now I have revealed you. The full revelation of God is Christ. Wow. The full revelation of God is Christ. There are some things that happened in the, in the Old Testament that were ascribed to God. Why? They ascribed those things to God because they didn't know God. Neither did, know, did they know the devil. So they only uh, imagined of a supreme being. That is why people died in the Old Testament and they said God killed. Why? They didn't know God. But now the full revelation of God, we see it through Christ Jesus. I love this. The full revelation, the fullness of God, the completeness of God is seen through Christ. So does God kill? John chapter, uh, John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So who is the killer? The thief. But I am come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 10, using the King James, he says, The thief cometh not. I know grammatically it's not okay. It's not correct because Bible is not for grammar. The gospel is not, for, uh, it's not grammatical. It's written, it was written in Hebrew, the Old Testament. The New Testament was written in Greek. So don't try to look for grammar in the Bible. So he says, uh, The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when Jesus came, he came to bring the full revelation of God. And he came to put a distinction that you must differentiate who, who steals, who kills, and who destroys, and who gives life. Because those two people are different. You cannot kill and give life at the same time, unless you are confused. So he says, it is the thief who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am. You uh, look at the word I am. The, the King James says, but I am come. I know that, again, that one is not correct according to your grammar. And the teachers who taught you grammar, you cannot say I am come. You should say I have come. But Jesus says, I am come. This takes us back to the book of Exodus. When God was sending Moses to deliver the children of Israel, Moses asked God, so I am going. Who do I say has sent me? And God told Moses, I am that I am has sent you. So what is the name of God? I am. Ha. Ah. Now Jesus says, I am come. So what does he say? That God has come now in the flesh. The great I am has been manifested in the flesh. And what, had he, what has he come to do? He says, I am come that you may have life and have life 
in abundance. So with John chapter 10 verse 10, we can now single out who kills, who steals, who kills, and who destroys, and also understand who gives life. And we see it is the thief that kills. It is the thief that steals. It is the thief that destroys. Hallelujah. And God gives life and he gives it in abundance because he is the great I am. And he says, I am come. Wow, isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. So anything that is in your life that has been stolen, anything that is in your life that has been killed, anything that has been uh, destroyed in your life, don't think it is God. Because God is not a killer, neither is he a destroyer, neither is he a, a thief. He, he does not come to steal. It is the devil. And when you understand who God is, that he is a life giver, he gives life in abundance. You will put the devil where he belongs. You will arise. You know, because many people don't know God as the Father and they have not received this revelation of God as revealed by Christ, they live, uh, they live and, and uh, they don't even fight back. They don't even, uh, whatever happens, they say, uh, whatever happens will happen. Whatever will happen will happen. Anyway, whatever will go will go. Those such kind of statements. And they give in to everything, whether it is good or it is bad. Some of them say, maybe God is teaching me using this cancer. My, my good friend, God is not teaching you using cancer because he's not a destroyer. Cancer comes to, kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It is an enemy. Hallelujah. Cancer is not from God. Asthma is not from God. Those arthritis, they are, not for, uh, they are not from God. That chest disease is not from God. Your eye diseases, they are not from God. He is not a destroyer. He is not a killer. He is not a thief. It is, the work of the thief. it is the work of the thief to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that you may have life. The great I am, the great God that sent Moses to Pharaoh now has manifested in the flesh as the great father. And he says, I am come that you may have life in abundance. So whatever is not of God right now, we are prudent in Jesus' name and we declare the life of God in your, in your family, the life of God in your house, the life of God in your business, the life of God in your career, the life of God at your workplace, the life of God in your health. Praise be to God. God is not using negative things. He is not using uh, vices to teach you lessons. Why? Because if he wants you to learn anything, he says, I will send my spirit and he will guide you into the whole truth. He will be your teacher. So your teacher is not sicknesses and all those things. You cannot, even you as a parent, if you have a child or maybe you have your brother or your sister, you cannot teach them lessons by telling them to go and lie down on the road so that they can be knocked down by a car. No, 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 unless you are very evil. And we know God is not evil. God is not, God is not evil. God is good. And because God is good, he's not using those things to teach you. I can see someone that has, a, has embraced a situation in your life and you think that it has been brought by God. You have been thinking for years that it has been brought by God, yet it is not a good thing. Yet it is a sickness. Maybe it is a, 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 it is a, a sickness maybe you have inherited from whoever you have inherited from. We don't care about all those things. What we care is this. God loves you and he wants you to have life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. Therefore, that sickness that is in your body, that you thought that God is uh, using it to teach you a lesson, I rebuke it right now. It is not of God and we, we cannot accommodate it in our bodies in Jesus' name. He says, I have revealed to them who you are. And he says, I will continue. Ah, I love the Passion Translation. John 17, verse 26 says, I have revealed to them who you are, and I will continue to make you even more real to them. Praise be to God. This is the work of Christ, to make God real to you, to make him real to you as Father. He says, so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me. Wow. Wow, that is awesome. That is mind-blowing. That the same love God has for his son, Jesus Christ, he wants you to experience the same love. It is not just about saying that God loves me. Everyone is saying that God loves me. Everyone says God is love. But now he wants it to be an experience. Wow, God wants you to experience the love. The embrace of his love, the kisses of his love, hallelujah. In your darkest moment, he wants you to experience this great love. For God so loves you, even right now. And what is the measure of God's love towards you? Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
That is how God loves you. The same way he loves Christ is the same way. God does not love Christ more than he loves you. I know you, you've grown up thinking that he loves Christ more because Christ was holy, Christ was righteous, Christ was better, he, knew, he did not commit any sin. But you see, the same life of Christ has been given to you. He says he has given you his righteousness. Stop trying to work hard to become righteous. It's not about you. Even if you are given a million years, you can never become righteous. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that he made him who knew no sin. So look at this. Christ was made sin. Did he commit any sin? No. Was he found with any sin? No. Even the, even the, the high priest Pontius Pilate says that I have found no sin in him. And actually he washed his hands. Praise be to God. So in him was no sin. In him was found no sin. He was without sin. He was blameless. But the Bible says he was made sin. Why? Because of you. How did he become sin? It was imputed. Imputed. It was imputed. That is a, uh, that is a powerful word. That he did not commit sin. But it was imputed. It was, account, it was placed in his account. Those who understand uh, computer language and also those who understand banking. It was placed into his account. His account was righteous, holy, acceptable, righteous. Every good thing was, he, every good thing that you know, that was Christ. But because of you and I, it was imputed into his account. It, he did not commit it. It was imputed into his account. He, be, he was made sin. That is 2 Corinthians 5.21. He was made sin, though he knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So what was the reason of him being made sin? It had an agenda. It had a goal. The goal of Christ being made sin was so that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. Wow. And again, how, do, how are we made the righteousness of God? In the same token, how was Jesus made, the, how was Jesus made sin? Having committed no sin, it was imputed. In the same way, righteousness is imputed to everyone who believes. Wow, hallelujah. So stop disqualifying yourself and making yourself feel like you can never be good enough. That is the religious way of doing things. But now we are breaking forth from the bondage of religion. He has made you righteous. That is why I'm saying the same way he loves Jesus is the same way he loves you. Why? Because 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, so are we in this world. Just as Christ is, so are you in this world. So when God looks at you, he sees you as he sees Christ. Mm, I went into a meeting one day and asked this question before I started teaching. I asked them, between, between Jesus and you, who is more righteous? Ah, many people say, Jesus is more righteous. But at the end of the session, they realized Jesus is not more righteous. They have the same righteousness. In the same way, this is the same thing I am speaking to you today, that J Jesus and you, no one is righteous than the other. Why? The same righteousness that is his, that is what you have received. As he is, so are you in this world. Wow. Have you committed any righteousness? It's not about what you've committed. In the same way, it was not because of any sin he committed. He was made. So in the same token, you have been made. Hallelujah. And he says, I, I have revealed to them who you are and I'll continue to make you even more real to them so that they may experience. God wants you to experience. Hallelujah. God wants you to experience the same endless love. It is called endless love, eternal love. And one thing about the love of God is that the love of God is unconditional. Everyone else can love you, but their love is conditional. Most People's love is conditional, but the agape love, the endless love, the eternal love, the love of God is unconditional. He loves you without strings attached. He does not love you if he loves you because he is love. I, I hope you get the difference. He does not love you if, because when you put an if, it means there is a condition. If you don't fulfill this condition, then he will unlove you. If there is an award like that, but you can say he will hate you. But he loves you with unconditional love. He does not love, then hate. He loves you, period, because his name is love. In him, there is nothing else but love. He does not love you because you prayed. He does not love you if you pray. He does not love you if you tithe. He, he does not love you if you 
if you go to church, if you commit yourself to service, whether you go to church or not, whether you tithe or not, whether you, you do all those things or not, God's love will never a waiver. It is unconditional. He does not have conditions. He loves you, period. He loves you, period. He loves you. And this love is everlasting. Hallelujah. And this is the love that Jesus is praying for you. Because John 17 is a prayer of Jesus for the for the church or for the believer. He's praying that you may continue to experience this love. The same endless love that you have for me. That is Jesus speaking. For your love will now live in them even as I live in them. Praise be to God. That now this love of the Father is inside us. Stop, uh, stop looking for love elsewhere. Stop looking for love elsewhere because love is inside you. God's love is enough. Praise be to God. Maybe you've been rejected by people. You've been rejected by your parents. You've been rejected by your children. You've been rejected by your employees. Everyone is against you. You feel like you are the only one in the whole world. I have good news for you today. You are not the only one. Why? The God of the universe, the owner of the whole world is right there with you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You know, I've had uh, uh, prayers People pray prayers like, God, destroy my enemies, kill my enemies. And sometimes I wonder, does God really have enemies? You know, sometimes we want to, uh, to, to, to ask God to join us by making, uh, with, uh, join us in making enemies. Let me tell you, even the people you think they are your enemies, the people you think they hate you or you hate them, God does not hate you. God does not hate them and he does not hate you because he is love and he wants you to know him as the loving father. Hallelujah. If you read the book of John chapter 5, as we conclude, John chapter 5, John chapter 5 from verse 16, John chapter 5 from verse 16, I will read, the Bible says, John 5 from verse 16. So from that day forward, the Jewish leaders began to persecute Jesus because of the things he did on the Sabbath. Verse 17, Jesus answered his critics by saying, Every day my father is at work and I will be too. This infuriated them and made them all the more eager to devise a plan to kill him. For not only did he break the Sabbath rules, but he called God my father, which made him equal to God. So, uh, verse, seven, verse 19, so Jesus said, I speak to you timeless truth. The son is not able to do anything for himself or through my own initiative. I only do the works that I see the father doing. For the son does the same works as his father. Because the father loves his son so much, he always reveals to me everything that he is about to do. Praise be to God. So Jesus, whatever Jesus did was to reveal the work of the father. And in our next episode, we'll see how Christ now revealed the Father and his works, how he revealed the works of the Father. And we'll see what are the works of the Father. Praise be to God. I'm excited. I love you so much. And I want, us to, I want to pray for you as we end this show. Father, we thank you that you love us this much. We are so grateful that your word is true. And the same love that you love Christ with is the same love that you have loved us with. We are delighted and how we pray that even as Christ prayed that you may continue revealing yourself by your spirit unto us that we may continue enjoying and experiencing this endless love. In Jesus name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen and amen. I am delighted. Thank you for being with me. This has been Beholding Christ show. My name is Ben Fetcher and I call you blessed because indeed you are blessed. Amen.